Hi, this is Lynn Langett, and here are a couple of short videos showing you my experience with the um, a beta of uh, a Hadoop on Windows Azure. This is currently a private beta, so you'd have to get a, an invite from the Windows Azure product team to participate. Um, but I'm going to just show you a little bit of how, how what the experience is in this early beta to work with the product. So once you get the email saying that you're invited to participate, then you go to Hadoop on Azure, and then you sign in with the Windows Live ID. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and do that, and I'll show you the experience um, going into the Hadoop interface. Now here's the, uh, uh, the startup section in, in Hadoop on Azure where you uh, request a cluster. Now the way that this works is you get it for a certain period of time and then you can extend it. And uh, when you come back and you use it again, if you use the same name, it'll be available because they release it. But if you've done some other stuff with it, you can see that I have a, a job history here at the bottom. Um, because it, it retains that job history. So during the beta, they're just not cleaning things out. So if you let it expire and you come back, your job history will maybe still be sitting there. It's not guaranteed or anything. So to uh, do your allocation, you pick your cluster size. So small, medium, large, or extra large. And uh, during this uh, limited CTP, there's no charge. So there's no pricing available for this. So you know if you want to go, go for it, you can just go for extra large and, and that's, that's fine. And then you have to put in a username and a password. And notice there's password requirements there. And uh, it's just doing a confirmation dialog as I'm typing this in. And uh, then you have to click off of it. And once you meet all the uh, uh, prerequisites, then it'll go green. You can optionally associate SQL Azure for something called the Hive Meta Store. Um, I'm not going to do that in this particular in instance. Now I'm going to go ahead and request the cluster. And I found that uh, this takes about um, three to five minutes. So I'm actually going to just pause and then come back as it updates. So you can kind of see the status. So you can see it's being allocated. It's going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to just pause the video now. Here I am back about a minute into the allocation process. And you can see that what is happening here is a bunch of role instances called isotope worker node, um, starting with uh, zero going all the way up to, uh, I guess it would be 24, right? Because that's how many I requested. And you can see that the nodes, if I scroll up and down here, are gonna be create, uh, allocated, created, and then they're gonna be uh, started. So, um, you know, again, I'll give you a time check so you can see. Now, if you wanna just do something quicker, you can do the smallest, the small cluster size, which I think is four nodes. But just for fun, I wanted to do the most powerful, just to see how long it would take. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. Here, about another minute or so later, I'm checking back, and you can see the status of the various nodes. Um, some are allocated, some are starting, so on and so forth. So um, just seeing how it's going, it's about uh, maybe five minutes in to when I allocated the cluster. Okay, here we go. We're done. And you can see this lasts for a day or so, and I can extend or release it at the end. And then I have various uh, job history of some jobs I played around with. I can do some uh, management here. Um, and I can uh, work with my uh, cluster through the interactive console, remote desktop, open the ports, or manage the cluster. So in um, subsequent videos, I'm going to show you how these things work. I guess I'll just click on manage cluster since I have a minute or so left here. You can see that disaster recovery is configured. I have 15 terabytes to work with. I can import data from Windows Azure Data Market, I, or I can set up the Windows Azure Blob Storage, or I can set up S3 to populate this cluster with some data so I can do some crunching on it. So uh, that's how the import um, and management functionality is exposed in this first version. And in the next uh, video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how you can uh, run some of these samples and work with your, uh, your Hadoop cluster on Azure. This is Lynn Langett. For more about all things data, go to www.lynnlangit.com.